very good evening to you. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are watching us from. And you are warmly welcome to the Power Impact Series, proudly brought to you by the African Season Speakers Network, where we influence the next generation of Africans. And hey, wherever you are, there's a platform you need to be and to share your experience and to share all that you've been through to be a source of motivation to others. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Ozuaz, and it's always a pleasure having you here on the Power Impact Series. Last week, we were not here because we were starting the World Cup and a lot of people were at Qatar. But today, we are here and it's going to be wonderful today because we are still in our month of health. And on the platform or on the studio today is somebody you love to listen to over and over and over and over again. But before we go into the, letting you know who we have in our studio today, you are. Get into the chat area. Let's know who is here. Let's know who is in here. Give me the vibe. Let me know where you're connecting us from. And you know what? Get your questions ready because it is going to be all about health. But before that, I'll take my first commercial break. And right after that, I'll introduce to you our guest for today. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation, and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs, and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers. For booking and interviews, contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.afsesnet at gmail.com. You can also follow us on all social media channels at AfsesNet Global. African Season Speakers Network, influencing the next generation of Africans. Influencing the next generation of Africans, and that is what we are here to do. And as I said, today's going to be a wonderful day. <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful time. I'm so happy because we're going to talk about health. And hey, that's one of the prime things you need to take care of. And today we're going to do that. So, Without much ado, I just want to introduce to you our guest for today. And then right from there, we're going to start our conversation. God. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> I am just ready for our guest today. Okay. So let's go. Right. An exceptional dental surgeon with international working experience our guests receive the majority of her dental training at the queen mary university of london's dental school known as bart and london school of medicine and dentistry an adaptable professional previously worked as an assistant biochemist with nestle before going into full time dentistry where our guest has worked as a dental care professional dental nurse lecturer dental surgeon and resident dental surgeon an entrepreneur and dental specialist of exceptional repeat our guest founded the dental clinic in sao paulo brazil before moving to ghana to co-found all small dental clinic and tooth baths, pediatric center, okay? A chain of dental clinics located at Osu on the Oxford Street and Dansoman in Accra, Ghana. Our guest is a renowned, competent, and excellent interpersonal skills make her lovable and patient favorite. Okay, we're gonna get some favorites people here now. I guess working experience has been in Brazil, the United Kingdom, and Ghana. A true expert of the dental profession, mm -hmm. currently the resident dental surgeon at the Trust Hospital, and has quickly helped the Trust Hospital to establish several dental clinics in different suburbs, owning two hair prodigies, effort, and talent. I just love giving back and is a member of the Rotary Club. You know what? I guess speaks English and Portuguese. 
ladies and gentlemen if you are ready just as i am ready help me to welcome the one and only dr emma oliveira let's give her a round of applause <laughs> All right. How are you doing, Dr. Emma? <laughs> Good evening. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. So how do you say how are you in Portuguese? <laughs> to the bay? Mm -hmm. That's my name. <laughs> to the bay. Como vai? Como vai. And what was the response? So when you are when you um you say to the bay. You reply by also saying to the bay. So it depends on how it's said. Okay. So yours was to the bay and told me to, to the bay. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Yeah, there are a few dancers operating in Ghana who are more skilled and qualified. And one of them is Dr. Emma. So today we have a renowned doctor in our studio. This is our first time on our platform. So it's going to be cool for her today. Right, so I just gave a little bit about you, but hey, since you're here, we want to hear from you yourself. Who is Dr. Emma? Excellent. So um, I'm an award-winning international dental surgeon with over a decade of international working experience, and that spans across three continents, okay? So namely South America, mm -hmm. Europe, and Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm so passionate about dentistry. Okay. And I also love giving back to the community by engaging in free community oral health services. Okay. And as you rightly know, I speak Portuguese and also very fluent in English. Okay. And I'm happy to be here to share my knowledge and experience in dentistry. So please feel free to ask all your questions at the end of the session. And I'll be more than pleased to answer all to answer all for you thank you please be free to answer your questions she will be ready to answer them all for you okay so how is dentistry like in brazil okay so what i've noticed is that when it comes to dentistry over here in africa well i'll say Ghana because this is where i am based currently um, access to oral health is, is quite rare. People only come to us <laughs> when they are in pain. Right, so let me hear from you. Give me something on the, I mean, in the chat area. Buzz me there. Let me know who is online with me, where you are joining me from. Okay, I have my first person online here, Gina. Hey, Gina also says hello. I'm joining you all the way from Bongo. Wow, Bongo in the Upper East region. I'm, I'm, I, I, I hope I've got you right because uh, because of the new regions that have been added on. Gina, if I'm not right, let me know. Bongo, I know Bongo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have Paris Bennett all the way from London. Paris, how are you doing? <laughs> Another queen from Paris joining us this evening. Right, so um, Dr. Emma was talking about dentistry in Brazil. So yeah, you can go on. Yes, yeah, so what I've seen is that over here, people only come to us when they are in pain. Um, I'm trying to establish, um, you know, people need to come even though you're not in pain because oral health is in direct correlation to your, your general well-being. When you have problems in your oral health, it affects your other, uh, the other parts of your body as well. And then problems in other parts of your body can affect your oral health. So there's a direct correlation between the two. Don't just come to us when you have um, when you are in pain, come to us even when you are not in pain because it's important to have that habit, okay? You need to incorporate oral health into your daily practice. Now, in, in Brazil, for example, they come to, they, they focus more on cosmetic dentistry. So you see people coming in for teeth whitening, for veneers, for crowns, and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, here, they only come when they are in pain. So then it's more, more about extraction. So instruction means they'll come and they want you to just pull out their teeth. And that's a huge misconception. Then says we don't only take out teeth. No, we don't do that. We do other things as well. We restore the teeth, okay? 
because you need that teeth to chew. You also need that teeth to smile and to speak. So it's important to restore it as much as possible, okay? So that is the main difference. Here, they just come, take out my tea, doctor. I'm having pain, I want it to go. No, but in Brazil, it's cosmetics. They come because they want their tea to look beautiful. They want to enhance their smile, their appearance, okay? And I have this thing that I tell my patients. For example, if you can be well-dressed, looking beautiful, have the most beautiful hairstyle, beautiful clothes, but if your teeth are all very, very yellow, nobody will see what you're wearing. The main emphasis or focus will be on your teeth. So the teeth is the window to the body. I mean, the mouth is the window to the body, okay? It's very important, and it stands out. Also, if you are missing your front teeth, the first, the upper front teeth, and you have the most beautiful hair, most beautiful clothing, no one will see that. The only thing that will stand out is the teeth that you are missing. Okay, so teeth is also fashion. It makes you look beautiful. Besides its functional abilities, it helps you to look beautiful. So please, uh, take care of it. So please take care of it. Teeth is also a fashion. Wow, that, that, that's, that's, that's strong. That's a big point there. Wow. <laughs> hey, people, we are getting our hashtags already. So let me know, let me know. Keep putting your hashtags down because, yeah, we're getting it already. Teeth is also a fashion. Okay, right. So, so what, what are some of the things that will let somebody walk into a clinic, a dental clinic? That hey, I'm just coming to check, check my, check my teeth. Not, not that I'm coming for extraction because hey, you are, you are known for that. And from where I'm sitting and where I'm coming from, that is it. It's only when we having an issue that we start looking for the nearest dentist or dental uh, dental clinic. So uh, once you're having all your teeth working and everything, I assume is okay. No, 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 no. We don't see them. And when you're doing your yearly reviews, you're doing your health reviews, you hardly see people adding to their list, going to see the dentist. What will change this lifestyle? What will cause this thing to change so that we can have it on our list that will work to the dental clinic and say, you know what? I'm not coming for any extraction this time. All I'm coming in for is have a look at my teeth or have a look at my dental formation. How can that be done? Yes. So I'm thinking that the change in behavior needed for people to actually um, visit the dentist regularly for it to become a habit um, has to become a social norm. So we we'll need everyone to work together. So um, strong partnerships um, in terms of other doctors, okay? Referring, teachers, educating, midwives, teaching, and um, community oral health and the community health workers. Everyone has to come on board in order to bring about that enduring change in habits and develop also sustainable um, strategies that will include everyone, including the most vulnerable people in our society, children, um, and so on and so forth. So we will need to also start implementing preventive oral health care and reinforce the message that your oral health affects your, I mean, your oral health affects your general well-being as well. So we we'll need it to become a habit and a social norm for that to happen, for that change to occur right 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 we need to let it be a social norm for a change to okay you're an entrepreneur what are you into are you do you sell teeth or do you do something else <laughs> well, oh. we do sell, well we do not sell teeth but if you need artificial teeth okay um we do have it right so when it comes to dentistry like i said before we are into restoring teeth as well so all is not lost if you lose your teeth. If you have your teeth extracted, it can be replaced. Currently, there are several means of replacement, okay? Um, we have what we call the fixed options and the removable options, as well as implants. Now, when it comes to fixed options, it basically means that they are fixed in your mouth. You can't take them off. Now, when it's removable, you can take them off. You take them off when you're going to bed, following morning, you put them back on. And then implants is the supreme. It's one of the most advanced forms of replacement of teeth. Now, that being said, all of them have the advantages and disadvantages. I'll briefly explain each of them. 
when it comes to the removable options okay we have um, two types we have what we call the acrylic dentures and the flexible dentures okay um, the acrylic dentures basically means that it's made up of acrylic material so it's slightly harder as compared to the flexible dentures but both perform the same thing they are all very retentive and functional the main difference between the acrylic and the flexible is the material used in preparing it okay so acrylic is what people would consider to be the old school type the ones that our grandmothers or mothers um, were using back in the day right. there's a more uh, modern type called a flexible denture made up of valves very flexible and it's smaller okay now the good thing about the uh, removable options is that your teeth your natural teeth are left intact we don't touch them at all we only replace what is missing with the aid of the dentures the disadvantage is the fact that you have to be taking them out of your mouth when you're going to bed so every night it's advisable to remove them from the mouth so that the uh, the gum can also rest and then oh. fully morning you put them you put them back on good thing is you can chew with them you can smile with them you can do whatever you want to do with them they don't cause any um, distractions whatsoever okay and then we have the fixed options now when it comes to the fixed options we don't take them out of the mouth the fixed options are kept in the mouth okay now the fixed options what happens is that um, you come to the clinic and then your existing teeth are sort of like prepared or trimmed in such a way that the fixed um, the fixed teeth or the uh, the ones that you replace in the artificial teeth will be fixed or attached to it. Now the disadvantage is that sometimes sound healthy teeth are sort of like um, sacrificed in order to replace what you don't have. The advantage is that you don't have to be taking them out at all. They are left there insects you can chew with them you can smile with them you can talk with them you can do whatever you want to do with them they behave just like your natural teeth and then we have the implants the implants is a supreme the only disadvantage of the implants is the cost implants are very costly and so not everyone is uh, fortunate um, to be able to have them done okay and then also it depends on your health issues if you have a couple of um, health issues unfortunately it's contraindicated so these are some of the um the advantages and disadvantages of them implants is very good but unfortunately very costly um it ranges from about thousand five hundred dollars all the way up depending on where it's done so the minimum is about thousand five hundred dollars per tooth so if wow. you have a couple of teeth that needs to be replaced then it becomes quite um expensive right if you're just joining us yes welcome to the power info series show where today we have in here dr emma Oliveira, Aha, an award-winning dental surgeon she speaks two languages yeah information so in the next set we're going to switch to portuguese so all my portuguese friends online <laughs> get into the chat area and say something let me try and then translate it to english for those who can really understand you yep Thank you so much. I have um, Stephen Giggs all the way from South Africa. He says, I'm joining from South Africa. Thank you so much. Georgina said, yes, you are right. Yeah, Bongo is in the Upper East region. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it right. Thank you so much. <laughs> I got it right. So keep, keep, keep the messages coming and get your questions ready and share the link as well so that others can also join us for our topic. For today. Right. So we are about to go into our main topic yeah mm. homobidities and oral health mm -hmm. over to you <laughs> dr emma what is all these huge words that we see here comorbidities and oral okay health. so yes so comorbidities simply means the existence of one or more diseases at the same time in the body okay and the reason why i chose this particular topic um, was because of the fact that most often at times there is the ideology that your general well-being is totally independent of your oral health people think that oral health is in isolation no it's not 
<laughs> and that is a huge misconception because like I said before problems in the mouth can give you problems in other areas of your body oh, and really? problems in other areas of your body can give you problems in your mouth as well okay so I want to use this platform and uh, to play with all of you let's do better mm -hmm. right. let's do better because if your general well-being is compromised your oral health gets compromised as well and it's vice versa okay it will interest you to know that i'll just give a few examples of um, oral health and then some of the um, diseases that affect both your oral health and other areas of your body one main example is diabetes okay now when you are diabetic and you have poor oral health you're in trouble because then the disease becomes like a cycle it's you won't heal um, diabetes that is poorly controlled poorly controlled means that you are diabetic and you are not on any uh, medication whatsoever you tend to have a lot of gum issues to the extent that your teeth can become mobile and they fall off so you can lose your teeth due to diabetes which is which is not controlled okay so um, make sure that if you're diabetic and you are not taking proper care of it I mean you're not taking any medications you're not seeing any doctor please make sure that you change that habit besides seeing your general practitioner or the doctor taking care of you when it comes to your condition you also need to ensure that you take good care of your oral health okay by visiting us regularly we can do what we call cleaning for you now cleaning ensures that the teeth and gums are healthy okay um, cleaning won't make your teeth white it is totally different from teeth whitening cleaning is therapeutic it makes the teeth and gums very healthy now teeth whitening is cosmetic it makes the teeth look beautiful white and that's it it's not bad at all actually it's not both of them are good but there's a difference between the two of them okay another disease that can affect your oral health as well as your your well-being is um, infective endocarditis so infective endocarditis affects it's a cardiovascular disease meaning it affects your heart okay um, bacteria in the mouth can travel all the way to the heart destroy the heart valves and cause infective endocarditis okay so once again it's been proven there is a direct correlation between oral health and infective, I mean, and cardiovascular diseases. And once it's destroyed, you're in trouble. You, you have to be dependent on surgeries, medications, and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, one other very interesting uh, disease or condition that affects both the mouth and the, uh, your, your general well being is if, um, erectile dysfunction. Um, there's, there's, there's a direct correlation between oral health and erectile dysfunction, you see. So um, I'm actually working with a urologist. What we are trying to do is that we're trying to do some few research. It's been proven, however, but I'm also doing a bit of research into that. But it's been proven that um, erectile dysfunction, um, you could get it due to poor oral health, you see. So these things are not things that you should take for granted at all you see and it can affect fertility so it can affect fertility it can even affect low birth weight once again it can affect low birth weight so poor oral health can lead to several issues sometimes people come to the clinic and we look in their mouth and it tells a story so i can look in your mouth and i know what you have already so certain systemic diseases, systemic means that it's in other, it's in your body, okay? It manifests neural cavity. So we look in the mouth and then we see all sorts of things. And for example, HIV can also manifest in oral cavity. So you have infectious diseases also manifesting the oral cavity. And then cancer. Cancers can be determined in the oral cavity as well. And then we have oral cancers like common cell carcinoma starts in the mouth and the good thing is that when these things are determined or seen earlier they can be treated and you know prognosis is very good but if it's ignored it's not, and not seen in time then it causes complications okay 
So, so that is it. It's very important that you take off your own cavity because, like I said before, and to reiterate, it's, it affects several aspects of your life and your well-being. So these are some of the few examples. There, there is a lot more, plenty, plenty. Mm. Most, like I said, infectious diseases, you have herpes. Herpes can also give you oral manifestations, you see? And it's not really coming from the mouth. It's coming from other areas of your body, but manifesting in the mouth. So you could have viral infections manifesting in the mouth. You could have bacterial infections manifesting in the mouth. You can have um, fungal infections also manifesting in the mouth. You see? So all diseases, I mean, most of them can actually manifest in the mouth. So it's, it's something that we shouldn't take for granted. Oral health is important. Okay? The mouth, once again, like, um, once again, is of paramount importance because it's the window to your body. Wow, your mouth is the window to your body. Wow, I mean, I'm getting surprised about some of the things you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah. what? So, <laughs> oh God. So that, that 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 answers most of the question. That's the reason why most most people will only come to you when we only need a scratch. <clears throat> but we don't know how these things are interconnected because yeah, some of the things you just said are, are scary. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but but we don't see or we don't have any early signs to some of these things. So <laughs> how do you then connect them? Because that is it. Um, as you're saying, um, diabetes and then the rest, fertility, erectile dysfunctioning, and then yeah. um, low birth weight and stuff. It doesn't give any early signs. So I mean, I, I want to know about all these things and then say, okay, let me go to the dental clinic. Because you don't have any signs as the other oh, sickness that comes up. Yay. Ah. If you just join in, I'll share the link because, hey, there's a lot of things going on here. I am learning a lot of things today. Wow. <laughs> right, I have uh, Nelly saying I'm joining you from Ghana. Thank you, Nelly, for hey, joining man. us. Uh, uh, uh. Steven says, good stuff. I'm really learning something today. The map is the window to the body. Yes, the map is definitely the window to the body because he, 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 he. All right. Mm. Okay. So... How can one how can one take good care of their oral health? Because okay, there are no early so, symptoms. There are no early yes, symptoms. Yes, it's very interesting because a lot of people think it's about how many minutes you brush, how hard you brush. But <laughs> it's not very wrong. And it will surprise you to know that a lot of people use the wrong brush as well as the wrong brushing techniques. What are the brush in Florida or Florida? Ideally. Ideally, you're supposed to use a soft or medium bristled toothbrush, never ever hard. Wow. <laughs> and unfortunately, you see a lot of people go, going around um, using smokers toothbrush, for example. Smokers toothbrush is very hard, very aggressive, very like abrasive, and it causes a lot of distraction to the teeth as well as the gum. Okay, I just want to explain a little bit about the oral, I mean, your mouth right. and then the teeth. So each tooth has five surfaces. So unfortunately, I have a mannequin here. So I'll just use my mannequin to demonstrate quickly. Yeah, please hurry up and get into the classroom because the class has started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is, um, this is my mannequin, okay? Can you right. see it? Yes, we can see okay, it. Okay, so each tooth has five surfaces. I'm going to demonstrate here. So, shall I move it to the side? Is it okay? Can yeah, it be seen? Okay. Yeah, I can. Okay. See. So you have surface one, surface okay. two at the back, surface three on top of it, surface okay. four on the side, and surface five on the other side. Okay? okay. The back tooth is the same. So surface one, right, yeah. one here, yeah. okay. two, three, okay. four, and five. Okay, and all the five surfaces have to be brushed or cleaned properly. Otherwise, you're not doing anything at all. And also, when you're using a brush, it's not about the quantity of paste. It's about the quality of brushing. So assuming, I don't have a brush here, pardon me, but assuming this is your brush, okay, 
and this is the bristol i mean where you're supposed to put the paste you just have to put small pea sized okay so the paste shouldn't be all here no way it should be just small pea sized because it's not about the quantity of paste it's about the quality of brushing so you just put small pea sized paste right there and when you brush in so the surfaces that faces your gum okay i mean not your gum your cheek and your lips you put a brush in an angle like a 45 degree angle and then you go in a circular motion okay. so circular so as you go in a circular motion you clean here you see the edge the area that is you see at the edge of the gum and then the tooth so you put a brush in an angle you go circular 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 all around okay now when you brush in the inner surfaces the surface is facing your tongue and your palate okay you don't you also go like that and then you scoop out so it's like sweeping you scoop yeah. out in one direction only and then when you brush in the surfaces so these surfaces are chewing surfaces okay so when you brush in the chewing surfaces that one you can do the forward and backwards motion so for the surfaces, you do your forward and backwards motion very well. And then in between the teeth, the brush isn't able to clean in between the teeth properly. So you use a dental floss. I have one, but it's not currently here with me. It's in my washroom, I would have shown you. But it's called a dental floss. So the dental floss, it's used in cleaning in between the teeth. And there's a technique involved in doing that as well. You put a floss in there and then you move it against the against the surface of the tooth. Okay? And then you scoop it out. So the floss or the dental floss, it is what's it's what is used in cleaning in between the teeth. And every single tooth has to be cleaned like that. So when you're done with the top teeth, you do the same for the bottom teeth. Okay? And ideally. You're supposed to brush and floss twice a day, morning and evening. It's imperative to do so. So morning and evening, you need to floss and brush so that you are assured of having clean teeth. And then don't forget, uh, don't forget to brush your tongue as well. That is very important. The tongue is a muscle. It has a lot of germs, a lot of food particles, saliva, and so on and so forth. So when you brush in, you need to brush the tongue also. And you brush it very well. Because as you are talking, as you are eating, the tongue just keeps moving around in the mouth. And if it's contaminated, it will just spread the germs all around. Okay? So always ensure that you brush your tongue as well. And then another thing I want to talk about is diet. You need to avoid eating foods that is very high in sugar. Because when sugar gets adhered to the tea surface and it's not cleaned, and bacteria starts feeding on that sugar and dissolve the tooth surface and forms cavity. So cavity is formed when you take excess sugar. Okay? Now, good diet is not just good for the mouth, but for your general well-being. It's important to have to eat a balanced meal, okay, for your general well-being, okay? So good diet and exercise. Exercise is also very good, not just for the oral cavity, but for your general well-being. Like I always say, oral health and general well-being is in direct correlation. So whatever you're doing for your body, if you're doing good things for your body, it's also helping your mouth, okay? Because the mouth is not in isolation, it's together, okay? And then also practice visiting the dentist at least twice a year because problems can be picked up solved before they become worse so come to us we are friendly people okay we are nice friendly people dentistry is not just taking our teeth we are fashionable people these days um, there's advancements made in dentistry so many things are going on okay so um, pass by come see us and they will give you all the gist and advise you accordingly we will give you all the advice and then Plenty. just that you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so it means you need to get a toothbrush, not a hard one, soft one. And then you need also a dental floss. 
<laughs> How are you, my people? Do you have those things at home? Hey, it's going to be good in here. You need to get it. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Francis Opari joining us from Ghana. Thank you so much. You are learning a lot. Mm. But Bob, Bob Baby said, hmm, there's a lot of things, a lot of things going through his mind now. Okay, Nelly said, thank you so much. Ah, he's giving us all the apple we need. Okay. All right, let, let me give you this question. Uh, it says what? Uh, the dental floors. Is she talking about the tiny threads? Is it what yeah. you mean? Yeah. <laughs> right, I right, right. One, okay, Steve. I don't have it currently here. Yeah, so the dental Steve. floors they are threads. They look like threads. But okay. the main purpose of the dental floors is to clean in between the teeth. Okay? okay. Um, it's interesting because one time I was in traffic and I saw somebody just pick up one quickly looked in the driving mirror and then just went Hur! and then the person put it down. So in my mind, I was wondering, was the person going to use it again another day or later <laughs> in the day? Because it's contaminated. Once it's used, you need to discard it. Okay. Oh, okay. Once you use it, because when you clean it in between the teeth, okay, um, there are two types of dental flosses available. There is one that is like a long thread. So when you're using that one, I always advise that you take a long, you take, you know, a long portion of it and then you fold it around the fingers so that when you are cleaning, you can be folding the dirty one on one side so that at any particular point in time, you always have a clean surface to clean the other areas. And then there's one that comes with a handle. So there's another dental floors that comes with a handle. That is a little bit expensive. So what I advise my patient to do is that when you're using the particular one, after cleaning, let's say, in between this area, for example, you rinse it, you rinse it under water before you move to another space and you clean. Don't use the same dirty thing all over. And once you are done, you can discard, take a new one, and then use it for the bottom teeth. Okay. So you don't have to repeat, you, you can't repeat it. Once it's done, just discard it, take a fresh one, and then you use it another day. So those people who use it in traffic and then just put it down and <laughs> use it another day is wrong. Please put a stop to it. You are just transferring microorganisms from one part of your mouth to the other, and it's harmful. Okay. So you can, you can do that as often as you want depending on the number of times and then the number of um, flossing is important because um for people who have spaces in between the teeth food gets okay. stuck there all the time and you see people using toothpick here and there yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. i'm not really a big fan of toothpick because toothpicks if it's not used carefully it's it injures the gum and what yeah. you want to avoid is injuring the gum okay because once you injure the gum Injure the gun. It's 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 unhealthy. It will bleed, becomes painful, it becomes inflamed. Okay, so I'm not really a big fan of toothpick. I prefer to use it the the, the dental floors instead. So after eating, just use it, clean your mouth. You can go to your washroom to do that. Just clean it nicely, rinse your mouth, and you're good to go. Another thing that I want to say is that it's important to stay hydrated. The mouth has saliva. Saliva needs water, okay, to be able to be produced. So let the mouth be hydrated. Drink a lot of water. Water is very good, not just for the mouth, but for your whole body. Okay, so um, incorporate the habit of drinking water so that the mouth is continuously hydrated to produce good quality um, saliva. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Emma. Hey, 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 the questions have started dropping. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I love it. Keep the questions coming. Keep the questions coming. If you're joining us, you are on the Power Impact Series show where today we are with Dr. Emma. Yeah, and it's getting good and good in here. Are we? If you missed, don't worry. Let's finish. Go back to the <clears throat> start of the whole program and then keep picking all the notes that you need to pick because a lot has been shared, but it's more to come but yeah before we take on the next section or the next set of questions and the next set of the presentation we have i'll just take a quick commercial break i'll be back don't go anywhere share the link 
Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers. For booking and interviews, contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.afsesnet at gmail.com. You can also follow us on all social media channels at AfsesNet Global, African Season Speakers Network, influencing the next generation of Africans. Influencing the next generation of Africans. And that is it. That is all that we're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining. This is wonderful. We love what is being shared today. Thank you so much. Kwame Opari says, well noted. Thank you for all that you're sharing with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, question here for Dr. Emma. And yes, 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 we're going to let her have it right like that. How many minutes must you last when you brush your teeth? <laughs> I knew that question was going to come. But yes, it is dope. How many minutes do you need to brush your teeth? I mean, how many minutes should you last when you brush your teeth? Okay, so thanks for the question. But it's really not about the number of minutes spent in brushing, okay? Right. It's about how thorough and comprehensive you brush. Right. Now, brushing involves a technique, okay? And like I said earlier on, the tooth has five surfaces. Each single tooth in your mouth has five surfaces. And so you have to ensure you brush all the five surfaces diligently, efficiently, okay? And also using the right techniques and the right tools. Tools in this sense is the brush. Now, for the brush, it's very important because if you're not using the right brush, you're actually not doing anything at all. Um, if you use harsh or hard brush, for example, it's like using a hard brush for a porcelain floor. You cause a lot of scratches, a lot of abrasions, and nothing gets done. Okay? So in your mouth, you have to use a soft or a medium bristled toothbrush and the right quantity of paste to brush, okay? And then also you have to floss. So brushing and flossing goes hand in hand. Every time you are brushing and you're not flossing, it means that you're just getting half of the job done. You're not doing a thorough job, okay? Because the brush doesn't clean in between the teeth adequately. You need the floss to do so. So brushing and flossing go hand in hand. They work together to ensure uh, optimum delivery of services. I mean, optimum delivery of oral health care. Okay. So it's really not about the minutes. It's about the efficiency, the comprehensive nature, and the quality of the brushing. Right. The quality and thorough nature of the brushing that matters. Yeah. What of mouthwash is it advisable to use mouthwash regularly okay now when it comes to mouthwash i in particular i'm not really a big fan of mouthwash mouthwash is just it's just fancy okay um we we give you mouthwash when it's important for example when you have bleeding gums and you come to the clinic after doing a cleaning for you we might recommend um a mouthwash for you but they all have what they do. So the fact that a patient A is using a particular mouthwash doesn't necessarily mean that patient two will use the same. It all depends on the condition that they present with. So when you're brushing well, when you're following all the right techniques, using the right material, the right paste, the right brush, the right floss, then mouthwash is really not necessary. It's just fancy. So we only prescribe it to you when it's needed for health reasons. But I don't, I, I personally, I don't even use mouthwash at all. I don't need it because I'm doing the right thing for my oral cavity. And also when you use it too much, it tends to kill the good bacteria in the mouth. So there is bacteria in the mouth, but we have the good bacteria as well. Okay. Wow. So you don't want to do anything harsh to kill the good ones. Okay. okay? And sometimes, the mouthwash is used can be too aggressive and they mm. tend to be detrimental to the health of the mouth. Wow. So before you use any mouthwash, please seek 
um, expert advice. Ask your dentist or a dental surgeon and seek advice from them before you go around using mouthwashes. Seek advice before you go around using. Ah, mouthwashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't kill the good bacteria in there. We need them to keep our dental quality or cavity strong. So please, <laughs> seek advice before you go on doing that. All right. Uh, question in here is, uh, at what age should my child start seeing the dentist? Great. So um, before, we used to say that let them come in from the age of maybe one or two, okay? okay. And still it stands. But once the child starts developing teeth, you could just pass by for an advice. And most often at times, it starts from the age of six months. So teething starts from the age of six months. We're not really going to do much, but at least we're going to give you advice on what to do and show you how to go about cleaning the developing teeth, okay? So once the teeth start erupting, you could just come, come for advice and then we'll guide you accordingly. So I would say once the teeth start erupting. Okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah. Don't start giving teething kind of syrups and then go worry the dentist later on. Go there and get the advice before we start doing all these things. Yes, because a lot of people do that. They start giving them some teething syrups and say, yes. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. They start taking matters into their own hands. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, people, get ready. Be sure. We have almighty search engines, but there are some things <laughs> that the search engines are not going to give you. You need to get in there and let the expert handle it for you. All right. This lovely one from <laughs> Bob Baden. He says, yeah, I am very particular when it comes to my toothbrush. I change it every month. Yes, that would be the next question. How, how often should you change your toothbrush? That would be a next question. But let me finish with this one. I, say, I change it every month. That's for me. I remember back in school, my colleagues would be like, your toothbrush needs to break before you change them. <laughs> <laughs> You won't believe some use their toothbrush for over a year. Please elaborate on, on this because one of them is online now. <laughs> all right, all right, right. But how often should you change your toothbrush? Okay, so ideally, you're supposed to change your toothbrush after three months. Okay. Three months is okay. But if you want to be fancy and change it on a monthly basis, that is fine. No problem at all, but ideally after three months. And so when you see that the bristles have gone bad, so once the bristles start going bad, you can change them as well. So if it's not three months and you've already seen that, see, when we are going bad, you see one bristle facing one side, the other facing the other, and then you know that it's time for the, for the brush to go. So three months is okay, but once you notice any, um, some any awkward or if it's bad, you can just discard it also as well. Okay, another question in here is so one more thing. Most people do forget to brush their tongue. Unfortunately, unfortunately, people do forget to brush their tongue. But you see, the tongue is a muscle, very powerful muscle. It helps you to speak. Without the tongue, you can't talk at all. Okay? Right. It helps you to eat, it helps you to chew as well. So um and then as you are speaking, the tongue is moving all around. So if the tank is um, harboring microorganisms, that means right. you are spreading it all around. Mm -hmm. Besides, you can even swallow some of the bacteria that can call them. Um, sometimes these bacteria, when they're in the mouth, they are not too troublesome. But when they find themselves in other areas of the body, then okay. they become distracted. Like from the beginning, I talked about infective endocarditis. So the bacteria responsible for that is in the mouth, right? Once it's in the mouth, it's fine. Not causing any issues. Well, some issues, but not too extensive. And as soon as it finds its way through the bloodstream to the heart, then it's a different working. You see? So, so the tongue is very important. You need to ensure that you brush it. Don't forget to brush it. If you need to put a reminder somewhere, maybe in front of your mirror or something, please do so. But the tank has to be brushed very well. Very well. The same brush you use in brushing the teeth, you can use it for the tank. Or you can get a, some people have this special 
tank cleansers that they use. You can get that as well. But the brush is also very effective in cleaning the tank. All right. Right. So, um, <clears throat> Stephen says uh, he wants to know what causes um, gum bleeding. I'm sure you, you elaborated a bit about it based on the brush or the kind of brush the person is using. But I think he wants to find out Aside that, what are the other causes of gum bleeding? Yes, so when it comes to gum bleeding, there are two main stages of gum bleeding. Um, the gum is called gingiva or gingiva, okay? Right. And in medicine, anything that comes with ITI, so like gingivitis, means inflammation of the gum. So when you have inflammation of the gum, the gum becomes very puffy, looks reddened, and it bleeds. And inflammation of the gum comes as a result of calculus, okay, which starts as dental plaque. So dental plaque forms on the surface of the teeth. When it's not removed, it hardens, becomes calcified, and then turns into dental calculus. And dental calculus gets adhered to the teeth surface, so gets adhered, attached, I mean attached to the teeth surface. You can't just get rid of it with your normal brushing. You need to do, or you need to come to the dentist for us to do a professional teeth cleaning, scaling and polishing or washing of the teeth, okay, to get rid of it. Now, if it's not gotten rid of and it keeps lingering on, then it moves to stage two, which is periodontitis. That means it's an advanced form of the gingivitis. So periodontitis means that it's no more affecting just the gum, in the case of gingivitis, but also it's going to affect the, the bone or the um, the ligament that holds the tooth in the bone. Because the tooth has two main surfaces, I mean two main parts. You have this part that we see, this white part, okay? Yeah. And then there's a part in the bone covered by the gum that you can't see. It's called yeah. the root of the tooth. So it's embedded in the bone. Now when gingivitis is not treated, it advances into periodontitis, which means that the ligaments um, holding the tooth in the bone becomes affected. And this affects the bone as well. So gingivitis, I mean periodontitis, will cause the tooth to become mobile. So very soon, besides bleeding, you have mobility, you also have sensitivity, and then eventually you lose the teeth. So if you don't treat gingivitis, it will progress to periodontitis, and then it causes loss of teeth. Okay, so it's a disease. One disease will progress to the other, becomes more severe, and then it starts causing harm. Okay, another thing about bleeding gums is that sometimes it's really not from the mouth. Certain diseases like leukemia can also cause bleeding gums. So once again, comorbidities and oral health. So you might think that bleeding gums is coming from your mouth, but it could be coming from underlying health issue such as leukemia okay so when you have such conditions don't sit at home and treat it don't use all the fancy mouthwashes no seek expert advice come to the dental clinic come for us to you know assess comprehensively thoroughly diagnose and then treat wow 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 we, we are in a classroom today uh, no one that you, you 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 were once a lecturer so we we, we are we admit all the lectures that is coming but but that's good that's good i mean um, you've really clarified a lot of stuff for us today so with what that you just said can it lead to something that you can call i mean dental problems can also lead to can i say um do you have anything like dental cancer we have oral cancers yes we have oral cancer plenty and one of the leading causes of oral cancers is smoking as well as taking high um, alcohol consumption i mean high in, in, in intake of alcohol can also cause oral cancers so yes there are several types of oral cancers and they are into several categories okay sometimes they don't affect sometimes you don't see them because sometimes they're in the bone like i said the tooth has is in a it's in a bone so you could have some of the cancers affecting the bone. You could have some of the cancers affecting the soft tissues in the mouth. So okay. we have the heart tissues and the soft tissues. And so, yes, we do have oral cancers. And 
if if we are able to diagnose early, prognosis is, is very high. Okay, right. survival rate is high. But if it's not diagnosed early, unfortunately, then it becomes a different ball game. Right, right. It becomes a different ball game. What a bad breath. Have you got anything in there? So, um, bad breath. A lot of people think that it comes just from the mouth. But mm. interestingly, bad breath doesn't only really come from the oral cavity, okay, or okay. from the mouth. Okay. It can come from your ear, nose, throat, or even from the stomach. So right. I look at it in a holistic, I use a holistic approach in looking at bad breath. When it comes to the clinic and we assess the mouth and it's coming from the mouth, we do cleaning for you. Sometimes we do a comprehensive cleaning in the form of curita, deep scaling, root cleaning, and so on and so forth. Once that is done, it should stop the bad breath. But if it progresses or it still continues, it means that it's not only from the mouth, we then um, refer you to the ENT specialist. Because when you have your sinuses blocked or your sinuses infected, you could have bad breath as well. Right. Now, once the ENT specialist assesses you, treats you, you should stop. If it doesn't, then we have to check your stomach. So then we let you see the gastroenterologist. That is a stomach specialist. Because problems in the stomach also gives bad breath. So it's a cycle, I mean, it's, we, we approach it holistically. We look at several areas, several factors in order to treat it. Sometimes too, it could be psychological, okay? Sometimes it could be just person thinks they have it, but they don't really have it. So once again, if it's diagnosed with psychological, we refer you to the appropriate person, usually a psychologist or a psychiatrist, to help you deal with that also. All right, so quick one. It says, uh, with the gum bleeding, can one contract any of the STDs? Okay, so when it comes to STDs, it's possible you can get it from the mouth if you have sores in the mouth. So if you have open sores, there's a possibility you could get some of these uh, STDs, yes. Right. Okay. So open sores so, in the mouth cause that. Right. Doreen Ando says, what causes to decay in young children? And what should you do if you have such a child? Should you wait till the milky teeth get uprooted by itself? Oh, what advice can you give? Yes. Uh, it's it saddens me to see young children have to decay because the pain that a child goes through it's the same pain an adult goes through. Two decay doesn't know a child from an adult. And it's excruciating pain. And it becomes very traumatizing for the kids, okay? Now, when it comes to very young kids, breastfeeding uh, or maybe bottle, when you have, they sleep with a bottle in their mouth and it's not clean, they tend to have a lot of decay. And it becomes rampant. So rampant caries means that it's not only on one tooth, but it's all over the other teeth as well. Okay, and it can be avoided simply by ensuring that after the child feeds, you clean. So cleaning or brushing helps to prevent that from occurring. To decay occurs when food particle gets stuck on the teeth surface for a longer duration of time, such that microorganisms who come feed on the teeth uh, on the on the food particle on the teeth surface. And then form acid so they form acid the acid will then dissolve the tooth surface and then the cavity forms so once um it's impaired i mean once the food particle is removed earlier okay you don't have this process of caring so you you eat but make sure you brush immediately okay and if of, of course if you avoid eating sugary foods it's also a good it also helps massively because high intake of sugar is what even facilitates this process. Because when you're taking a lot of sugar, the microorganisms will feed on it immediately and then form acids, okay? The interesting thing about the tooth is that um, it's got an, a layer called the enamel. Right. The enamel is a very powerful, very strong um, layer of the tooth, okay? It's able to withstand several pressures, several, and it's even able to remineralize meaning it's able to, you know, rebuild itself, right? So you always have to ensure that you 
strengthen that layer of the tooth by using fluoride to paste. Fluoride is good, but it has to be used in the right um, quantity or moderation. So I always tell parents that when you buy paste for your children, buy age appropriate paste. So there is zero to two, two to four, four to six, and so on and so forth. So you follow that sequence. Don't use the paste that you use as an adult for a baby or a child. Buy the age appropriate paste because it's got the right or adequate amount of fluoride needed for them. Okay? And also brushing, okay, incorporates the habit. The fact that it's baby teeth doesn't mean you shouldn't brush them properly. Okay? Interestingly, the baby teeth will fall off, but they all have the time that they leave their mouth. Okay, some of them will fall off at the age of nine, ten. They don't fall off as soon as the child turns two or three. No, they fall off, but they have the time that they leave their mouth. So if a, a tooth is compromised at the age of one, and that tooth is going to leave their mouth at the age of nine, that means the, tooth, the child is going to live with that compromise for nine good years, isn't it? Okay, so don't think that oh, because it's baby teeth, they all fall off. Yes, they do fall off, but at the right time. And secondly, sometimes if the problem with the baby teeth is severe, it gets uh, carried to the adult teeth erupting, and it can it can affect the adult teeth as well. Okay, so baby teeth should be equally taken care of, just as you do for adult teeth. Both of them are important. Okay, um, the teeth fall off at the right time. And then the right teeth comes at the right time as well. Um, the, the interesting thing is um, if the baby tooth is falling off, let's say this is a baby tooth and that's the adult one. Once the baby tooth falls off, it guides the adult tooth into its right position. Okay. Now, if it falls off prematurely, the adult tooth will be lost. Where should I go? Should I go left? Should I go right? And okay. then it gets confusing. Okay. So the baby tooth, you see, like that, it aids, guides the adult tooth to occupy its right position. So you don't want to lose it prematurely either. And um, once the child has the cavities, I mean, don't wait, just come, let's see the child. Sometimes it could be traumatizing, but it's always best to see what we are working with. Most often at times, this is something very shallow. We don't even have to inject or do anything like that. We can do a straightforward filling. Sometimes we even have to just advise you on how to brush and we are good to go. So don't wait come immediately you notice something is wrong with the teeth and then we could we could take care of you well you, you just answered the next question that i was going to ask i was going to ask at what age show the baby teeth make way for the adult teeth but then you just brilliantly just chip that one in so yes so steven your question has been answered right 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 okay get ready for the hashtag for today man oh, dorian <laughs> says thank you dog thank you dog I'm, I'm just waiting i'm just waiting for ah, yeah i'm just waiting for the hashtag for today okay so <laughs> all right so we're getting ready for the hashtag for today right so bam, in the chat area is our hashtag for today today's hashtag is see it's a fashion that's right. This is a fashion. <laughs> I tell it you, it, it is a fashion. Wow, I, I, I love that. I love that phrase. I love that hashtag for today. It is a fashion. Right, so before we go, we want to just take our last words from Dr. Emma. <laughs> yes, I like the fact that he mentioned it is fashion because, you see, um, if you have very beautiful white teeth, and you wear uh, red lipstick, it just stands out. It looks beautiful. It becomes so attractive. It makes everything that you're wearing, you know, look beautiful, clean, and nice. So teeth is definitely fashion, okay? So I really like that hashtag. I'm going to even keep it for myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. You're going to keep it for yourself. <laughs> yes, it has been a wonderful time. Yes, thank you all for joining us. And yes, thank you all those who gave in your questions or gave some comments on the program. It has been a wonderful. Okay, you wear yours. <laughs> Someone said, "Tea is a fashion." Wear yours. <laughs> yes. yes, I like that. It's true. Right, wear right, yours. right. Wear yours um, boldly, confidently, and beautifully. Right. That is it. That is it. That is it. So we want to say a very big thank you for coming and being a source of motivation and giving us this kind of. Uh, 
in-depth knowledge about oral health it is it is priceless because a lot of things have been revealed to us and a lot have been answered as well but you know what we do we'll say we want to say thank you for coming and thank you for sharing that and that is it you can't just come to the power in pastries and without taking in any cyber security tips. so what i'm talking about today on the show on cyber security tips today is email compromising most often we fill a lot of online forms we get to online portals and then we are asked to sign in and most of them do ask for your email address and when you type in in your email address just beneath where you type in your email address you get to the password and quickly we put in the password to our email address most people do that thinking the portal or the online account is requesting for your password to your email account that is where we make the mistake or that's where we get compromised that email address that the portal or the online account is asking for is just for you to be able to log in so that they can communicate with you but the password that it's requiring is the password that you are going to create so that you use that password to log onto that online account you're creating it is not your password to your email account most people do that and then they get their emails compromised so when you get onto any phishing link or any phishing website and then request for your email you quickly put in your email and then you go ahead to put in the password to your email and that is when you get compromised and this is how the bad guys are doing they redirect you to a site mimic the normal online portals you visit and immediately you put in your email address and then you attach the password to your email address they get access to your email account so next time you fill in that online form or that online account make sure that the password that you're requesting for is not the password to your email account it is a password that you need to create so that it can you can use it as your form of security to get in onto that online account that you're creating thank you so much for joining us and it has been a wonderful time here with dr Ava for if you are joining us same time next week as i always say dreams are in level make sure you get to the top level of your dreams so see you same time next week same place same virtual portal it has been a wonder my name is benjamin Oswansa. see you same time next week have a wonderful day and know that he is a fashion